What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to talk about cleaning your gun. Uh, mainly focusing on handguns, uh, as you can see from what I have here out on the table. Uh, I wasn't going to put you through a big boring video of me sitting here cleaning all these things. Um, the first thing when it comes to cleaning your gun and the biggest thing, rule number one of the four safety rules, treat every weapon like it was loaded. So before you start cleaning this thing, before you do anything remotely close to cleaning, make sure your gun is clear. This is where the majority of your accidents happen or when you're cleaning your gun. And the reason is most people think, oh, I took my magazine out, it's clear. That's not the case. You want to you drop the magazine, cycle it. If there's anything in it, it will eject out. Pull it a couple more times just to be on the safe side if you really want to be safe. Lock it back, look down in there. Make sure your gun is clear. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest and most important thing to do when you start cleaning. Make sure the gun is clear. I cannot stress this enough. The reason you want to make sure it's clear is the majority of your handguns, you have to release the trigger uh, or pull the trigger to release that tension to let the slide come out or come off, I should say. Always make sure your gun is clear. Always can't stress that enough. So again, all these are empty just because I know they are, but we'll look down in them on the safe side just because I got done cleaning them and putting them back together. So everything is clear. The ammo is off here to the side. I've got a couple of empty magazines just for uh, some demonstration stuff. Now, some of the things you'll need when you're cleaning. Uh, you don't need this big you know, extravagant layout. As you can see, I've got some old t-shirts here, uh, but you definitely need some type of uh, oil. Uh, this is normally will clean and lubricate. This is GCL. Uh, Frog Lube makes this. You have to kind of soak the parts in it before you start scrubbing. Where with the GCL, I can just put a couple of drops on my toothbrush and start cleaning. Um, after that, pretty much you don't have to have these fancy brushes or anything like that. Um, I normally just keep a uh, toothbrush handy uh, just if I'm for quick cleaning. Toothbrush, some oil, a couple of patches, you know, that's really about it. The little eyelet for the patches, and then of course your T handle. Uh, most some of your handguns will come with the T handle and come with the uh, brush uh, to screw in and go up in and out of the barrel. I've got a small brush here with got some plastic to it to get some of the tougher spots and then I've got a little brush with this kit it's even got the bristles are a little bit more uh, hard I should say to help get the really grimy parts and then I've got small little things brass pieces here to kind of get in if I've got to really scrape the gunk off if it's depending on how bad it is and the reason I say depending on how bad it is is how often you clean your guns uh, most people will say you need to clean it after every time you shoot that's not the case. Um, the NRA says you need to clean it at least once a month. Um, it's really going to kind of dictate how much you do shoot. If you're shooting, what we normally recommend for practice is 50 rounds at least twice a month. If you can't get that in, at least 50 rounds once a month. Um, but 100 rounds in a month isn't major. Uh, that's not anything where you really need to go and clean it. Now, if you want to go and clean it after every time you shoot, by all, by all means, go right ahead. It's kind of a personal preference in knowing your gun. Uh, my Glock 23 here. Uh, honestly, I probably cleaned it about this time last year and ran uh, 800 to 1,000 rounds uh, through it last year uh, with teaching classes. And no, I did not clean it until here recently. Now the reason I started, I did want to sit down and clean it, is I started having a few feed issues, I started getting some double feeds, and some small little malfunctions like that. So normally if you start to see some small malfunctions like that, it's not normally anything wrong with the gun. Um, you would probably just need to go and more than likely just lubricate it. Uh, not so much as cleaning if you're out on the range and you need to get some practice done, but some lubrication and that'll really help out a lot. So no, you don't have to clean it every time you shoot. You only have to clean it once a month. Um, now I will say the whole time last year, no, it didn't get cleaned, but I would break it down, 
wipe it down, and then I would go and put some frog lube on it. Uh, frog lube is very good lubrication. It doesn't take much, and it lasts for a really long time. Um, I just take, and I guess before I do that, most of your guns are going to have a similar takedown lever right here. Um, the block is a little lever that you have to get on both sides like this, thumb and normally this finger, but I've got a little cut, so it kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah, wham, well, I'm a big baby. Um, but just, I grab it back here, put my hand around. Let me go ahead and take tension off because you don't have to pull it all the way back to engage uh, the trigger to get this off, but just barely pull it back. And then right there, it'll slide right apart. And what I would do is take the spring off, take the barrel off, I would take and wipe everything down, and then I would take the frog lube, lubricate that, the feed tray, the slide and everything, put it back in there and go. So it's really personal preference on how often you want to clean it. Should I have cleaned it sooner? Yes, I probably should have. But things got a little crazy last year uh, with all the things that we've been adding and the introduction of our YouTube page. So I wasn't really able to clean it like I wanted to. Uh, with the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, uh, the lever is going to be right here. This one you actually have to lock back to take that down, and it's just pushing it down. Um, the springs in these, when you first buy them, can be very, very tight, and that's not anything bad, but they can be tight, and depending on where your strength is at in your hands, you might not be able to get that slide locked back. So if you can't get the slide locked back, uh, normally what I do is I just grab it over the top, make sure I'm clear of the chamber. I'll push it back and then with my other hand, push the thumb up on the slide lock and get it to lock back. If you can't do that, all you need to do, put an empty magazine in it. Again, so everybody can see it's an empty magazine. Act like you're gonna load it. It'll automatically lock back. And all you gotta do is drop your magazine, push the lever down, release the trigger, breaks down. Now this is a Taurus Slim that I'm working on uh, for a friend of mine. Um, before anybody starts emailing, text, call, blowing me up on social media and stuff, I'm not a gunsmith. I know a gunsmith that you can go to. Um, he, Bob Gotts is an excellent gunsmith. That's who I take all my stuff to. He actually sponsors uh, the school and the YouTube page. Uh, so I'll have all of his information down below in the description. So if anybody wants to reach out, needs some help, has questions, if it's something I can't answer or like working with this thing, if I, it gets out of my realm of what I know, that's where I normally send people. Very good guy, knows his stuff, very reasonable prices. But this one, um, same thing here, you'll pull back. It's got the levers on the side. Pull the trigger, release the tension. Now this one you actually have to hold the trigger back to get the slide to lock out. That's just how the Taurus is. So you have to hold that trigger back and then it'll come off. But they all break down the same way uh, when it comes to getting the barrel and everything out and pop the spring. Pop the spring, normally falls out. There's your barrel. There's everything broken down. So that's the Taurus, Smith, same thing. Spring, barrel, Glock. Put some right there, don't get Spring, barrel, there you go. Barrel, slide, spring, and your frame. It's really as far as you've got to go when it comes to cleaning. Um, now a lot of times you can take the back plate off, pop the firing pin out, clean that out, but you really shouldn't need to do that until you've ran, I don't know, maybe even a couple thousand rounds through it. Um, I didn't break it down like that to clean it this time. I'm not having anything where I've got issues with like uh, primer strikes or anything like that where I might need to take it down and see if it's gunked up and needs to be cleaned. Um, so this is as far as you need to go. Your slide, I guess, action if you should say, uh, barrel, spring, and your frame, and then just put some drops of oil on this and just sit here and start going to town. Um, the barrel, same thing, you can scrub it, put your eyelets on, run your patches through, pull your eyelets uh, through until now, 
You don't have to sit there and go for hours on end pulling these things through, trying to get these things to stay perfectly white. All right, they're, they're never going to be perfectly white after you start shooting your gun, but it's mainly, excuse me, getting the majority of the gunpowder and all the gunk out. And you can usually see the difference is when you get done. We see kind of little specks uh, on the inside of the barrel there. Um, once you get done, you shouldn't really see any specks. Um, you can even use boar snakes and pull down through there if you want to use boar snakes and do it that way. But uh, this is pretty much as far as you need to go when it comes to cleaning your handguns. And then same thing here, I'll put a little, some drops of oil on the toothbrush there and just sit here and scrub, scrub the feed tray. I even scrub inside the mag well and everything. And then I go back, wipe all the excess oil off, get all the gunk off, you know, and make sure everything looks fairly clean. And then I'll put everything back together. And it's pretty much just the same way, kind of we took it apart and just going in reverse. Your barrel, put your spring back on. I usually hold everything like this just to make sure everything lines up. You still might have to kind of wiggle, see? Now, everything wasn't lining up, so I, don't have the, I didn't have the spring back on right. So you can kind of, when you start breaking them down and cleaning them, you'll kind of start knowing if everything's, you know, put back together right. Um, but again, right there, and then I'll pull it back, pull it back, pull the trigger, pull, just to make sure everything's working. And then you see I've got some stuff, so just kind of go back and just kind of wipe everything down from all the excess. And then that's pretty much it. So there's a Glock. Shield. Long the put take a little tension off. Same thing here. Move it back. This is one. This same thing here. You'll have to lock it back to get that lever to stay. Now, once you've got this back on, you can still put a magazine in it. Empty magazine again. Empty magazine. Lock it back. Push the lever up again. This lever will actually swing. It's like this, and it'll swing down. And when you're done cleaning, you've got everything locked back, you just push it back up, drop it out. Just make sure everything is working. Same thing with the Taurus. Put it back in, put the spring back in. Make sure, see, make sure, there we go. Make sure everything's lined up and where it needs to be. Same thing as the others. So I don't have everything lined up right. You might have to kind of wiggle everything to make sure everything goes back in just the way that it's supposed to be. Yep, good there. I'll even put the magazine, empty magazine in most of them. Make sure they work and lock back. This I don't have an empty magazine for right now, uh, but same process. I know it's working fine, but just to make sure, you know, everything does work before you go out and shoot it, you know, throw an empty magazine in there and double check everything. That's pretty much everything you're going to need when it comes to cleaning. Again, that, the, the most important thing to start with, clear your weapon. Make sure there's nothing in that chamber before you start cleaning. I cannot stress that enough. I see and I hear about it all the time. A few months ago, my wife is a nurse. She had a patient come in, gunshot wound to the leg. Guess what he was doing? Cleaning his gun. Didn't make sure, dropped the magazine, thought it was good, boom, 45 to the leg. I don't know how big a 45 is, pretty close range and I'm sure that was not pretty. So make sure your gun is clear. Yes, I will keep repeating that. You need to understand your gun needs to be clear. Clear your weapon before you clean it. As far as oils, lubrications, stuff you're gonna need, there's kits out there that go from a 22 all the way up to a 12 gauge. Then you have kits for just Handguns that'll go from a 22 up to like a 357, 44. 
uh, into getting into some of the revolvers there uh, with that. And then you've got kits specifically for rifles, kits specifically for shotguns. There's so much out there when it comes uh, to cleaning. Uh, you've even got things like this rim oil here, you spray it on, scrub it. Same thing with lubricating. Uh, you can just kind of spray it on there to keep it lubricated. Um, if you don't have any lubrication at all, the shit hits the fan and you need to put some lubrication, get some motor oil. Yep, everybody's probably looking at me like I'm crazy. But you can put, I'm not saying go and dip the whole thing down in motor oil, but you can put your finger in there, get some on it, put it on the slide, the working parts and stuff, and keep everything lubricated. Lubrication and cleaning are key. Does it have to be done after every time you shoot? No. It depends on you and your gun and how you know your gun. But it, at least after you know a couple hundred rounds, I would go through and clean it. Again, I know this gun. I know what I need to do. Uh, most of the time, there's not um, too many issues as long as I keep it, like I said, wipe it down, keep it lubricated. Now, no, I wasn't going last year and just round after round after round after round and doing nothing. Wipe it down, keep it lubricated. If you really start to have a lot of malfunctions, um, double feeds, improper feeding, just it, it not working right, a lot of times it probably needs a good cleaning. So that's why I've sat down and given these a good cleaning. I'm gonna go back out and test this uh, Taurus uh, with uh, probably maybe 40, 50 more rounds and see what happens. Make sure everything's working right. But just realistically, all toothbrush and a boar snake is really all you need if you absolutely have to have the bare minimum. Some oil, a toothbrush, and just a small boar snake for like a 223 or something like that. Nothing crazy for like a shotgun. Um, you can kind of see how much fatter that thing is. So I wouldn't use anything like a shotgun. If you absolutely had to, you could even cut a piece of your t-shirt. I wouldn't use a sock so much it might get caught on stuff. Uh, but you could cut a piece of your t-shirt and just even take just a small rod and run it down through the barrel if you've got to get it clean. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of fancy stuff. The oil, toothbrush, bore brush will get the majority of it done because the oil will normally clean and you can put some drops on it afterwards to keep it lubricated if you don't have oil and lubrication. This is only for lubricating. The frog lube, it's green, so you know the stuff for cleaning is clear. So I'm not gonna sit and clean with this. This is mainly for lubrication. Works very well. You can get it in just about any store. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can even order it offline. Uh, I think they're, uh, yep, froglube.com. Again, the Frog Lube, the GCL, all these websites, uh, I'll have all in the description. Um, Bob Gott's information, I'll have all that in the description as well uh, with the gunsmith. And if you do need to have a gunsmith look over your gun. Uh, like I said, he's who I go to. He's a big sponsor for us. So I definitely appreciate everything he's done. Um, if you have any questions about cleaning or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, in the description, I'll have you know the website, email, ways you can contact me and everything like that. Um, please don't forget uh, to subscribe to the page. We're going to have other great videos coming out. We're going to have some gun reviews coming out. Um, a lot of great information is coming, so please subscribe, share, comment, let everybody know that we're out here and we're here to help you. And uh, again, any questions, let us know. And always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range. Do you mind? Sorry, Magnus. Chill out, please. It's okay. There's nothing over there. Um, sorry. 
Magnus, stop. So again, oil will clean and lubricate it. Just depending on, I, get, I like the, the frog loop. Uh, the frog loop is very good for Done. 